in the end, the Prime Minister is always the one who is in charge. They call the shots. Um, Dominic is a very, very visible advisor, but I think over the last decade, we've seen the role of advisor being more focused on by the media and being more talked about in, in popular terms. Um, and I think the, the Prime Minister understands that he himself cannot deliver the political leadership he wants to without the team around him. That's the way he's always operated in politics. It's unusual. Um, Tony Blair had quite a changing team. I was the third political uh, secretary that he had. He had three different heads of policy. He had a couple of different press secretaries. Normally, uh, the staff can change, but the leader, the leader stays the same. In this case, it, it feels very strongly as though Boris Johnson does not believe that he can run the government he wants to run, uh, deliver the mandate he believes he has, without this single advisor, which must be uh, very um, confusing, maybe challenging but, for the members of the cabinet. But John, you came in uh, in the eighth year of uh, Tony Blair's uh, reign as prime minister. Uh, remember when he was first elected, mm -hmm. his big political advisor was Alistair Campbell, the former journalist. Mm -hmm. At the time, he seemed irreplaceable, didn't he? He did, but um, when Alistair became the story, as he said, he re he resigned, he left, and he was replaced uh, by David Hill, a professional a communication professional who'd been around as a Labour advisor uh, from the government, Labour government of the 1970s, so a very seasoned person. That was the big ability of Tony. He actually found people to replace uh, apparently irreplaceable figures, and it seems a weakness or a lack of imagination in the Prime Minister that he cannot find another person in a country of over 60 million people who can give him the same advice, same support. I mean, just through the link door in the Cabinet Office, he's got Michael Gove, who's probably... Uh, for my money, the best and most political uh, and intellectually uh, thoughtful of all of the cabinet at the moment. So he actually has an elected politician, an experienced elected politician, who could be giving him some of the support, which is normally the way, you know, Blair and Brown uh, it normally works as a partnership between politicians in, in the UK, rather than a partnership between a politician and a single advisor. A partnership between potential rivals. We saw it in past conservative leadership contests. Yeah. It's interesting that uh, uh, John McTiernan mentions uh, Michael Gove and Elizabeth Mute since Dominic Cummings worked for Michael Gove first. Yes, and it's very interesting, but it also tells us something about Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson is somebody who's actually very <clears throat> faithful to his inner circle, and once he trusts someone, he never wants to let go of them, even though go uh, uh, challenged him uh, um, at the time, just after the Brexit vote for the leadership, with the result that Theresa May became the leader of the Conservative Party and the Prime Minister of Great Britain. And even that, which was called by many people in his own party a stab in the back, is not enough. Boris trusts the intelligence of Michael Gove, and he also trusts him to actually not be Machiavellian, which certainly you cannot levy at Dominique Cummings. Uh, but it's as if once he'd found a trusted circle, he found it very difficult to get rid of that trusted circle. And of course, politically, this is, this is a complete disaster because you need to be ruthless and you need to be thankless. And I can't help thinking of François Mitterrand, who would, uh, who threw away any number of people, including his prime, last prime minister, uh, Pierre Bérégovoy, uh, uh, when it did not suit him to have uh, them politically around. The what amazes me in this in this whole thing is how uh, what a com complete political hash they've made of it. It became a case. But Elizabeth, Elizabeth, remember back at the election in December, we said to ourselves, oh, we've got the veneer of nice guy Boris, but what we've seen in this campaign is that he's ruthless. Are you, have you changed your mind? He's no longer ruthless? No, I think he was ruthless because Dominic Cummings was behind him moving, you know, moving the arms and the legs. 